Hey guys, it's Ken. How you doing? If you watched my previous video, you saw that it's still in the pretty high 90s and sometimes hundreds at times in places in Central Florida. So even though we are in a fall state of mind, in an autumn mindset in Halloween, it's still hot. But today, I have a special challenge. And that challenge will take us to four locations today before heading back to the house to make something creepy. We had some family out to the house last night and they took a look at some of my Halloween decorations I made this year. And my sister said, hey, I'd love one of those things. And uh, I said, okay, I'll make you one. What thing am I talking about? You'll see. I do realize it is the middle of October, which means everything Halloween and Thanksgiving and the retail world are pretty much gone, making way for Christmas. But I'm hoping there's still some things left around here at the Dollar Tree. Nothing yet. Okay, no luck at the Dollar Tree. That's all right though. What I needed, I already have at the house. I just thought maybe I'd get some more if I could. But the next stop is, well, it's right back there. And after a small U-turn here on Chapman Road, we're gonna poke around the Goodwill store. This time I think I'll leave you guys in the car though. Last time I took my camera and you guys into the uh, Goodwill store, I got some grumpy looks. But if I'm successful, if I find what I'm looking for, it'll be standing right there when I get back. Let's see. In three, two, and one. Well, here we go. Three successful finds. This one is a porcelain doll kneeling in prayer. This one I think is supposed to be Anna by the dress, but the face looks nothing like Anna. I don't think so, at least. And this will be the star of the show, at least for today's project. So, what do you say we head home? But not before a quick trip to the Home Depot check out some of their Halloween decor and pick up a few more items. These guys are really cool. Somebody's... You there, come close to the glass. Ask a question, then hit the button. All right, we gotta ask a question. What question should I ask the fortune teller? Will I win the lottery? Hello, I didn't meet you. Ask a question, then hit the button. I just did ask a question. Will I win the lottery? Yes. Well, that was easy. All right, enough goofing around. Let's get to work. One can of black paint, matte finish, and white paint, not glossy, matte finish, and a drop cloth, plastic. The reason why I asked that fortune teller about the lottery, we never played the lottery, but we played the last couple weeks for the fun of it just to see what if, because nobody has won the last couple weeks. And nobody won last night. Now it's over one and a half billion with a B dollars. It's a lot of money. But that fortune teller says, I'm going to win it this time, so get ready for that. All right, back in the garage with our one, two, three choices. This one is broken. I just noticed the foot is missing. It got chipped off. So this might be a good pirate for another project. But I like the dress because it's white. So I think I'll put the dress from this doll onto this doll and save this one, which appears to be, again, Anna, for a later project. Sorry, Anna. All right, by accident, the arm slipped off of this one. So it kind of gives it a little added creeping factor. So uh, yeah, this will be fun later. All right, while well, the doll dress is off, take it outside and do a little distressing. And because my dress has a lot of wrinkles in it, and creases, and I'm spraying across. So instead of spraying right down on top of it, letting the paint just kind of skim the surface. And while the dress is drying, I roll out my plastic painter's tarp, take my X-Acto knife here, and cut off a piece. A piece that will fit around this small styrofoam pumpkin. Earlier when I was at the Dollar Tree, this is what I was looking for. They were out, of course, but that's all right because I bought an abundance of these, a bunch of these last time I was there. So I knew I had these in the, in the garage. So 
If I didn't find it, that's okay. If I did find some, I'd buy some more. Because around here, I work on Halloween projects all year long. So once this sheet is cut this way, I cut another one, same length, but going in the opposite direction. Using that same X-Acto knife, let's make a face. I do want to make this creepy, but also fun, because it's going to be a trick-or-treater. So there's my grin and my two big eyes. Actually, speaking of eye sizes, you might want to keep them on the smaller side because the heat gun we're about to use will expand the foam and make the eyes and spaces you cut out bigger than maybe expected. I've got some of this spray adhesive right here. Shake it up. I'm going to coat both sheets of plastic. Spraying is done. Place the pumpkin directly in the center of both sheets. I'm taking this out only because I know I'll be adding my own stem, so I discard this, and let's get to wrapping. And by wrapping, I mean taking all parts of this, this piece, this piece, this one, and this one, bringing everything to the center and all to the top, and kind of making a fun, whimsical stem. Now we have a heat gun. Don't be confused with a, high, with a hair dryer at all. This is a lot of power, a lot of heat from this little bitty nozzle right here. I'm going to put on the low setting, right here, low setting, and melt the plastic, shrink wrap it around the entire pumpkin, forming the stem, and then, of course, rotting out the eyes and the mouth. Here we go. form the stem the same way and it twist it as you're melting it make sure this is done in a well ventilated area And here's what we have. I was able to use the heat gun, melt the plastic, and fill in the space here, forming an awesome little stem. And I love what the plastic and the glue does to the surface of this jack-o'-lantern. It gives it that fun texture. We're gonna hit the eyes and the mouth and fill all that space with black paint. Kind of like this. And then, for the rest of it, we'll do a spray and wipe. Basically, we spray, and then wipe off. The importance of the spray and wipe technique is that you spray paint the surface. That allows the black paint to get into all those little crevices and creases, all those little textured areas that you created by uh, melting that plastic together, including up there in the stem. Then you wipe away the same paint, but leaving behind all those details and exposing the surface, which of course originally was bright orange, so it still retains some orange color. I did add some highlights to the jack-o'-lantern with white paint. And to make these highlights, I took a foam brush with a very little paint on it, rubbed off most of the paint, so it's a very dry brush, tiny bit of white paint, and simply grazed the surface of those raised areas, highlighting them. Very gentle, very light, especially in this area right here. Really showcase all that detail. I'm making sure that my brush is following the contours of the jack-o'-lantern. If you decide there's too much white, like you put too many highlights on your jack-o'-lantern, that's okay. You can do one more spray and wipe with the black paint. I'm going to do the same thing with the arms and legs of this ceramic doll. I'm going to spray paint and wipe away. And it should look, well, something like this. There we go. To put it together, I put a bamboo skewer down the back, spray painted that black. 
Now let's assemble the head and the dress and see what it all looks like together. I'll be piercing the bottom of this jack-o'-lantern onto the skewer. Then we should have a completed trick or treater. There you go. But how does she look under the spooky lights? Let's find out. I think the addition of those highlights at the end with the white really show off the detail in the stem. It just gives it a whole nother creepy vibe. I'm very pleased at how my trick-or-treater came out. So now this trick-or-treater, as a friend, if you recall from a previous video, I made this fun trick-or-treater. Let's put them outside together. See what they might look like coming down the street for tricks or treats. <laughs> this one, I mean, I know they're not supposed to be funny, but it's just, it's so fun to see the facial expressions come to life when the heat gun does what it does, but I can only imagine what she's saying to her as they're walking house to house on Halloween night. Pretty fun. Fun projects. Thanks for watching my video today. I appreciate it. If you like my video, let me know. Give it a thumbs up. I want to send a thank you real quick out to Eduardo Talbert and Monster Tutorials, a great YouTube channel and website that taught me some of these fun techniques that I've applied here. And if you try this project at home, let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, feel, for, feel free to share. I don't always do DIY um, Halloween videos like this, but take a look around my channel. If you like it, subscribe. It's free. And tap that notification bell. That way you'll know when a new video comes from yours truly. So in the meantime, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys a little later. Oh, I forgot to mention, on behalf of my friends and I, thank you for watching. And by friends, I mean... These guys.